Good morning, GTS Retail Partners, and thank you for joining us on uh, this Monday edition of the GTS Retailer to Publisher webinar series. Uh, today, we're featuring Don Rents from Chessex. He's the owner and founder of Chessex Manufacturing, and uh, it's a great to have him with us today. We're real excited about some of the new product announcements they have coming out. I don't want to steal any of his thunder, but I will just um, let you know right up front, uh, we are doing this through Zoom live. So if you have questions, if you want to ask Don uh, any questions, and, and he welcomes lots of questions, so feel free to do that. Uh, you can just use the chat function in Zoom. And that is down at the bottom of your screen. If you're on a, on a computer, uh, you'll see it there. There's a chat button, you can click on that. And then you'll get the option to send your message to either all panelists or all panelists and attendees. And if you choose all panelists, that's just Don and I. And then if you send it to all panelists and attendees, then everyone on the call can see it. So you can choose your audience for your communication and see what you wanna do. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can sign up as a retailer to register for future webinars to be notified that they're coming. Uh, there will be a link in the description below. And uh, if you're new to the channel, like and subscribe so that you're updated when new videos are launched as a resource for you in planning for the future. I'm Scott Bohr. I'm the category manager for gaming specialty products, which includes gaming accessories like dice and dice towers and all the fun stuff that really accentuates your game as well as miniatures and role-playing games. So if you have questions on any of those, please feel free to email me. That'll be in the description as well. You'll be able to reach that at the end of the video. So without further ado, I would like to hand things over to Don. Uh, I'll be running your presentation today, Don. So I've got that all set up. Okay. And uh, let me go ahead and start sharing that. But before I do that, do you wanna, do you wanna make an introduction? No, not really. I think that uh, at this point, um, this is our, our, our third webinar. I think that a lot of the, the customers are the same. So you know, other than the fact that, you know, I'm, you know, if there's, um, um, I'm at fault for everything that happens at Chessex. <laughs> you know, so that's about it. That's about it and such, you know, so, but again, I, you know, I thank um, GGS for the opportunity to be able to speak to everyone, especially during this time when we can't have trade shows and such. So yeah. can't see people in person. So, so I guess my little, without further ado, might as well get to the first panel. Okay, here we go. So lots of things that are happening at Chessex. Um, and, uh, or, the, or the next one. Yeah. <laughs> that was your background. There we go. So, yeah, we, there's a, I'm gonna say a lot of things are happening um, at Chessex. We're gonna have six new lab dice colors coming out probably September, October. <clears throat> most likely, I mean, more about that later, but um, basically this year, um, as a category, the, um, you know, dice sales are down, um, mainly because people, just the reason that dice are like fashion for gamers and, <clears throat> and everything in fashion is, is down because people are doing more things by Zoom and, and, you know, playing by Zoom and not in person. So they don't see the dice, so they don't, they, they they don't they, they they can't show off their their cool new colors to their friends and stuff like that. So there's plus a reason to, to buy it. Just the same reason that that there are fewer sales of pants recently because no one you can wear the same pair of pants to all your Zoom meetings and such. Um, so it's something that uh, um, that we use this period to do two things. One <clears throat> was to get our our normal inventory straightened away. Um, in the past, I've had to do a lot of air freighting in of this or that die to keep that polyhedral um, set in stock or, or whatever. And, and that's expensive and I don't like doing it. Also too, it creates a lot of <clears throat> issues because one die can be in like eight or, eight or nine different products. So where do you allocate it and such? So um, it's something where we've, we've used this time to have the factory make more dice than we can sell to like kind of help build up our inventory. But all, and also too, we spent some time designing new colors. Um, so you're gonna see a lot of new stuff coming up over the next six months to a year, because not only do we have these six lab dice colors coming out, um, um, but we also have about another six to eight really, really good candidates um, that uh, missed out on this one. So um, we're, we've developed a lot of colors um, so that um, it's gonna be more a matter of, um, of, uh, um, of getting the, uh, getting them made than anything else as, as opposed to designing the colors, which quite often can be a, 
um, a, a problem because we don't really want to release like crappy looking colors, even though we know we'd sell, but they're not going to sell well. And we're using a lab dice to try to find good colors for the future. So we only, only want to put the best out there. Um, so, um, so, so, so that, that's going to be good. Um, there, we would have had the, we probably could have had these out earlier, but uh, we get the tubes out of China and the tubes are, um, well, there's just lots of shipping problems out of China, um, as well as some production issues and such. So we're not sure when we're going to get the tubes. We have some tubes, enough to release or have these things at shows, but not enough for a full release. And I don't want to do an allocation of like 20% of the production run and then not have them for a while and then come out with 80% later on. So that will probably be delayed. So if you go on the next one, um, 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 oh, I, I could say that on the next um, um, uh, lab dice is going to be one Gemini and five like in the signature like marble colors. Uh, the reason why it was only one Gemini is because we we're also coming out with six new Gemini colors. Now, three of the colors were former colors like lab dice and such. Um, and there's going to be three brand new colors, but they didn't go through the lab dice process because, well, because quite frankly, I, as well as most of the people in the company, thought they were, they were good enough that they, that they said, yeah, these are, these are definitely first rate colors. So there's no need to test them and such. Um, and uh, um, those will probably again be available October, November is what I'm looking at um, right now. Um, it's a little delayed. They have some of it made, but the problem is that they're ha they only have so many Gemini machines. And, uh, um, and so to get the quantity needed for a release, it's just gonna take some time. Also, they only have like, like five of these Gemini machines or machines that can make that effect. And they had, a, they had an issue with two of them to where, and these are very old machines. Uh, they're probably made in the 1960s or 70s. Um, and they had some issues with them and they can't get parts for them now. So when something fails, they have to fabricate the part and that takes the extra time. Partially because all the people who were in that area that used to do fabrication have all gone out of business because the newer machines last a lot longer and they have fewer moving parts and such. So you, so you don't have the, you don't have the people. They actually had to find someone who was about 75 years old to make some of the, to make a couple of pieces because he knew how to get them made. <laughs> so they pulled them out of retirement. So they're a little concerned about the future, um, you know, but you know, the future is the future and, and now is, is now. So, um, um, so, so if we go, go on to the next one, okay. This is the one that I think is, a, is a, that, we're, that we are personally all excited about is the mini polyhedral dice. In the past, we got the mini polyhedral dice, the old ones, um, you see that picture on the, on the, right, on the right side, uh, out of the UK from a, a dice manufacturer who used to make our translucents, um, our normal translucent dice. Now the problem is that um, they just stopped making it for us. Um, they're, the company, the, the owner is basically in, in retirement. He's, he's switching for the production from the UK to, to Bulgaria. And you know, you know, basically someone's buying this business but they're not really that interested in the dice side. They're more interested in the component business and things of that nature. So it's something where they're just not producing. So it kind of necessitated us to um, make our own mini polyo dice at the German dice factory that makes all the other um, translucent signature and Gemini colors. So, I mean, the only thing that was really preventing me from doing that is uh, the cost of the darn molds, you know, because the molds for the mini polyhedrals were actually more expensive than, than the mold, the cost for the molds for the normal polyhedral dice. So it's going to take us like, you know, five to 10 years to finally make enough money to, to pay for the molds. Um, and I figure, let's say about one cent per die. Um, I mean, it's gonna take, it's gonna take a long time. So that was kind of like the, the big hurdle, but we decided to, to bite the bullet and make it. And we're glad we did it because these are really, really nice. Um, and we don't have all the, um, all, all the, the shapes yet, but the, what we've seen so far, um, well, we do, have, we do have samples of all the shapes, but, there were, but for some reason they made them in clear with white paint and you can't see them. So I, I didn't bother taking a picture of them because you couldn't really see them and such. Um, but the thing is that they're really are just very nice. They're the same, the same dice, just reduced down in size. Um, um, and, and I mean, I think that, um, um, you know, that, I mean, these, I mean, you know, everyone thinks 
their product is like the best that's out there. Okay. But based on what I've seen of our old mini polyethyl dice versus what we have now, these are so much nicer. I mean, it's just, you just look at them and they're just so much nicer. I mean, you can sort of see it in, the, in that picture or, or the other pictures. What I like about it is that they have got the, the underline underneath the six and the nine as opposed to a dot. The number sequence is the same. The, the font is the same. And, it's, it's, and they were they've done a very good job in making so the numbers are very readable. Um, so it's so that I just think that these are just, will put everything else that's out there to shame. Um, in, but then of course, that's my opinion, of course. If I didn't have that opinion, I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. But um, it's something that, that we are just really hyped up about it. And we're gonna, um, we're trying to get out 12 uh, dice initially, or uh, 12 colors. And what we're, gonna, what we're gonna do is eventually, the plan is to have 24 colors that are part of our normal range. And that way we can do like a box of 50 or a, a bag of 50 of those colors. And then throughout the year, make a production run you know, kind of like a lab dice type of type of effect um, or of a release where we will do an old color where we have the normal polyhedral shapes. So people who are interested in that in getting the minis can, okay? So like give an example on the first release, we will be doing uh, translucent red and translucent teal, but we won't be doing any of the other translucent colors like the blue or the green, okay? They sold well, but not quite as well as the other ones. But, I, but I'm gonna come out with 10 in the signature and you know, 10 in the signature range. Um, and it's, it's something like, like, I mean, what really has impressed me is that the, uh, um, the mini polyhedrals just look just as good as far as their pattern as the normal ones. Um, and in some cases, the samples I've gotten, which I haven't gotten full production pieces yet, and sometimes they change. On some of, the, some of them, I actually think they look better, smaller than they do in the, in the, in the big ones. Um, so um, there, there's going to be festivities. They're going to be. We're going to do. Um, we're going to do um, some vortexes. We're going to do some borealis. Um, and the borealises, they can make them with the luminary material inside. Okay, uh, and they look so. They look so cute. Um, so it's like that. We think that everyone who has our normal colors or normal sized dice in our, in our colors will want to have these. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I think it's going to kind of like, oh, how to say. Uh, Kind of like, kind of like, you know, be strong competition, strong competition for other people's mini hollow polyhedral dice. We've also decided to do the um, do the packaging, like like this is our basic our packaging for our normal polyhedral sets. And what we're using is we're using the same. We're going to we decide to use the same box as we use for the uh, 16 millimeter metal plated dice, the, the the small box. Okay, so. Like, the, like that kind of shows you the, the size difference. Um, and the reason we did that is that we have all these display, cardboard displays out there. And we thought that some stores may want to um, put the minis right up against the normal size dice. Because people say, oh, I like that color. Ooh, I like the minis. So you can get two sales for the, you know, for the price of one effectively, uh, rather than separating it. Also too, we wanted to uh, differentiate the old Many polyhedral dice from us in the clamshells with the new ones, and one of the best ways of doing that is to change the packaging. Um, so, 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 so that is what we did. And uh, the un only unfortunate thing is that this packaging, believe it or not, costs one cent less than this. You know, from the maker. Now, that's the part of the reason is because um, um, this mold has fewer cavities than this one, so it's a it's a time thing, um, and they're retooling to try to make you know, more cavities for this one to, to bring the price down a bit. Um, but it won't bring it down more than a few cents. Um, and because of that, we were thinking about trying to make these a $5 retail. But because of the packaging we're, and the extra cost, because uh, obviously it costs a lot more, probably like three times as much as a clamshell, um, was, um, we, we've, we've had to add that into the price. So, it's, and so we're like 99% certain that the retail price of the mini polyhedral is going to be $5.98. I know that most of the mini polyhedrals that are out there are already are like more like five dollars. Um, okay, um, right. Okay, yeah, right. Okay, um, um, but I think that the, that these are so much nicer, and they're already in our colors. They're established colors, and, and we have thousands upon thousands of these colors out there in sets that that will help pull 
pull, you know, pull the price. And again, like I said, they're nicer. So I think that people will say, you know, they'll look at them and say, you know, these are 20% nicer. Okay, you know, I, you know, you know, you know, I'll spring for it. Um, but it's something that, that I really, you know, we, we, we're all really excited about that, about this because we, we've shown these to some people um, who are not related to the company and such. And they've all said, oh, I gotta have some. Um, um, and, and one of the things that we were also thinking about doing too is maybe having a, a range of earrings out of the D20s, um, and maybe even the even, maybe even the ten-sided dice, um, because remember the factory that makes these dice was a costume jewelry house, um, and that area is very familiar with costume jewelry. So there's people over there who can, who can turn these dice into earrings um, if anyone's interested. Um, so that's it about that's it for the for the uh, the, the mini polyhedral dice. Uh, the next thing up, I think, are the mats. Right now, the mats. You know, this was a was the 40th anniversary of the battle mat, and that was on May 23rd, 1981. It was when they first were sold at GrimCon, which is a, like a local convention in in the town that, that I was at way back then with, when they were first made. And we wanted to do like a 40th anniversary edition, you know, shooting for shooting for May 23rd. But the uh, but the issue was that uh, you know, like everything has happened lately. It's all COVID related, um, you know, or it's been upset by COVID-19. And the, normally the, the, the factory would take 10 to 12 weeks to, to do a production run of vinyl. Well, I placed the order in, in, uh, um, in uh, uh, January and they have yet to get it made um, or made, made the vinyl. And then after that, we got to get the vinyl cut, got to get it printed, got to get it rolled, et cetera. So who knows when they're going to be available, but we certainly missed May. <laughs> you know, by a bit. But, you know, if the vinyl, which normally takes 10 to 12 weeks, doesn't get made for 30 weeks, there's not much you can do. Um, but, 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 but I think that these are nice colors. Um, we had blue and we had a blue vinyl, we had a green vinyl, we had a black vinyl in the past. Um, but, um, and, they, and they all sold okay, uh, but we haven't done them for a long, long time. So I don't know how popular these are going to be. Um, we've never done a grade before, by the way. Um, I don't, but but I think that they will be, you know, reasonably popular. Um, and we haven't had a new mat release in probably ten or twelve years. Um, and there, and we and there are a lot of mats out there. So, you know, we will see. I mean, the, the plan is to do one production run, and see how they sell. If there's a demand for for them, um, or continued demand for, we, we will make more. However. If it's going to take seven months to get vinyl made, it may be a long time before these come back again because I have not placed a, a backup order because I'm not really sure how well these will sell. Um, the one thing I did want to mention, this is very important because it's a, it's a departure from the past. Each of these mats, the four pictures there are showing the front and back, like top and bottom of each one. So you're going to have a mat that's going to be blue and green with squares on both sides. You're going to have one that's blue and green with hexes on both sides. Then we're going to have the black and the gray um, with squares on both sides, and one that's uh, with hexes on both sides, which is a departure from our current existing reversal mat, where it's one color of vinyl but two types of patterns: one hex, one squares. So I I I, I want to make sure that people realize that um, because it is a it's it's a departure from the, the standard we've done in the past, and the reason for that was that we've had many requests from people. Um, at shows to make a, um, a battle mat that's square, square, you know, squares on one side, squares on the other side, because people say, well, you know, I play d and I don't use the, use the hexes that much. Um, I've never done that because it would cause so much confusion from people thinking they're buying a square hex and getting a square, square, or thinking they're buying a square, square and getting a square hex. Um, so I've never done that. But, but so we're, we decided to try it for these because we have two colors of vinyls. And the reason, the other reason for it too, is if you're only playing with or only using squares, if you wanted to have a blue, and we had a square hex um, on the two sides, um, then you'd have to buy two mats. Um, so we figured that, you know, more people would probably be appreciative of just getting the squares on both sides or hexes on squares and the other way around. So we decided to go this way. We'll find out if people say, oh, I really wish you'd done it the other way, then maybe we'll do it the other way in the future or whatever, if there's a demand for it. Um, but I think the colors are very nice. Um, and um, um, I think that they, you know, they should do well. 
but again, we, we don't, I mean, we may be getting the violin soon, but I don't know when we're going to, you know, have time to actually get them rolled and, or print, you know, cut, printed and rolled um, because they do take a long time to, to roll. I mean, you can do about maybe, let's say like 30 an hour. So, you know, it, I mean, you know, doing four, actually doing eight products at one time, um, it's, it's going to take a while um, and such. So I did, and also I did want to warn everyone that that we're having like, you know, delays on getting our stuff, um, you know, being done for 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 uh, full product, you know, for full production for release. But we're, we're but we're having the product. The, the product is coming in like now. So we have the we have the we're doing three shows. We're, do, we're doing Dragon Con, Pax West, and Dra and Gen Con. So so we may not have the mask, but we'll probably have all the other dice. Um, um, we're probably gonna have all the dice there at the show. And normally I like to get the dice out like a month before the shows, but this, this year is different because um, we're really being held up by the packaging more than anything else. And, uh, and then also too, the other problem is that as you know, chaos theory dictates, everything has a tendency of happening at once. And that's exactly what's happening to us. Um, um, where we're, you know, the mats should have been out in May or June. So we could have gotten those processed and released and out. Um, the uh, uh, lab dice probably could have been out in, in late August, um, but because we don't have the twos, we can't release it. Um, the mini polyhedrals could probably be out in late, we certainly could have had six colors out in late August, early September. Um, but again, we can't get the, the boxes because the, the mold only has two cavities and it takes like a, a minute and a half to two minutes to make two. So they're chugging away. <laughs> I won't say what the size is, but it's, it's gonna take them a couple months. I and mean, that's why they're frantically trying to get a mold that has like eight cavities. Um, and they're retooling it, but it, Tooling takes time and it probably is going to take about a, we placed the order about a month ago. They said it takes about a month and a half to get the tooling done. So in a couple of weeks, they'll have more. So, so that, that's the hang up there. Um, and then the Gemini, just because it's, they have so few machines and they had a couple of them down. So that kind of delayed that one. So it's something that uh, we'll have them at the shows. Um, so I just want to apologize to all the retailers about having it so far in advance of having it, you know, release to the general market, um, but 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 the reality, but it's but it's but it also is very important, I think, for our marketing to get out there to show people we have all this new stuff. And and to be quite honest, I, I figured out that if um, if if someone bought one of each of all the new polyhedral dice set, not including the twelve and sixteen millimeters, they spend like two hundred and twenty five dollars. Um, then if you got some mats, you can add to that. If you got to add the twelve and sixteen millimeter. Um, it's going to be difficult for someone to spend that much money or whatever. Now, of course, at Gen Con, a lot of the big companies, like I guess, like Asthma Day is not going, so they, they may have extra money to spend on other things. So maybe people will have it, but not everyone's going to be going to Gen Con. So uh, they'll come back and people say, "Oh, these are really cool," and then then it, it should create a buzz that oh, Chess is coming out with a lot of great new colors, and so you know, you know, when they come in, you know, I want to get some. So it's one of those things where, um, you know, I just thought that, or, or we just thought that, that, uh, that the buzz that the, that the show would create for all these new colors to show that, that during the, the COVID-19 period, we weren't just sitting on our hands, you know, waiting for the pandemic to, to end. We were actually busy doing things to, to make things, you know, great in the future. Um, you know, so it's one of those things where, so I just want to apologize to everyone, you know, in advance to, for us doing this. But, you know, it's it's one of those things where what we're going to be selling at the at the show, likely sell the show, is only normally about I would say somewhere between three and five percent of what we sell into the normal market. So it's not it, it's not a huge amount if um, that really should affect people's sales. It's just it's it's kind of like more of a more of a um, perception thing although i do realize that a lot of people who do go to shows are also a lot of the store's best customers so this is one of those things where it's just you know i want to make my COVID apology in advance um 
you know, uh, and let everyone know that I'm not doing this on purpose. Um, that I, I really don't believe in it, but by the same token, too, if I have this stuff um, and we can't have it at the shows, and we go to shows mainly for marketing because with, with all the, uh, um, I mean, yeah, we can just see the, all the detail that's, that's required to like set our booth up. I mean, um, it's something that, uh, um, that the shows are not really profitable for us. Um, you know, they're, they're great for, they're good for, they're good for, for, um, uh, for marketing and advertising and a little bit on the cash flow side. But as far as being profitable, they're, they're not. So it's not like we're trying to hold stuff back to make extra profits at the shows because really um, they're, you know, from an overall standpoint, from the cash standpoint, they're not that important. As a matter of fact, we, <laughs> we had a very a long discussion about whether we're, whether we really wanted to start doing shows again, because <laughs> it was kind of nice not doing them for a year, because because of because of all the the effort that was involved. We're saying, you know, I kind of like, you know, we kind of like not having those shows, you know? <laughs> um, because quite honestly, we're getting more busy uh, at at the warehouses. Um, and the other thing I want to mention too, um, which is something that, that I, I learned Friday um, late afternoon, um, was that. Uh, the, the factory in Germany, uh, they have finally started building their new factory. Um, and uh, um, it's going to be great um, because the, the current situation, the old factory, they really make these dice out of five locations across their village. Because it's just that it's just grown to the point to where they didn't have the space for the machine, all the machines in one place. Um, and so they would put machines up in other places and one company bought another uh, um, bought the, the, the German dice factory and they had their own machines because they were in the business of costume jewelry also. So some of the machines, and so that capacity got added to what, what the other factory um, you know, could, could get made. So it's just very, it's all discombobulated. And it's, it's, it's always a problem. They, they have t times when they just like lose dice because they, the trans, they, they thought it was there, but it wasn't transferred, but they couldn't find it because other, because they don't have enough space. So the, so it got covered up by other dice that were molded and such. And uh, I think, I think I don't know if we ran out of it or not, but Nebula Black 12 millimeter, uh, six high dice. I think we either ran out or got really, really close to running out because they knew they had made them, but they couldn't find them. I, I basically told them, you know, make more and, and get them over here because we're, we're getting too low and such. Now, two months later, they found the dice. <laughs> they, were, they finally got, they finally unearthed them they were hidden by other you know by other bags of dice and stuff like that um because one of the things is that when the dice are made they don't have the polish on them so quite often it's it's a little hard to see what the exact color is because in in a, like a frosted version an untumbled version certain colors look very similar um but uh so so the the, the factory is probably going to be finished at the end of the next year and they're going to basically go from 13 machines to, to, they said 30, but actually 28 is, is what they're really going to. So that's going to make a huge difference. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, throughout, you know, in the future, like one or two years in the future, more like two years, we're going to have a lot more new, we're going to have a lot more capacity to come out with new dice, new specialty dice, um, all, the, all those things. And the mini polyhedral dice are probably, that was kind of like if, if I had my choice, I would have waited until um, uh, the new factory was, was made, but because we didn't have them um, and the factory said that they could do, they, they could handle it. And the fact that the factory basically got caught up on my, on our, all our existing um, inventory orders, I said, okay, fine, we can, we can do them now. Um, and that's part of the reason why we're kind of coming out with a lot of things, a lot of things, new things at once because they finally got caught up on our normal restock, you know, restocks. And I, I think that Scott will attest to the fact that, that when, the, when he places an order with us, he gets a very high fill ratio. Um, because I, I really, I, I, as a retailer, as a distributor, I always hated when, the, when a publisher ran out of something because you, you have a customer walk in and say, I want that. And you have to tell him, no, I can't give it to you because the publisher is out of stock. So I never want, I always want to try to do whatever I can to avoid that situation. So I really want to focus on getting the normal inventory um, squared away so before I started doing new stuff because it, 
to me, it doesn't really make that much sense to bring out new stuff if you can't keep the existing product on the shelves um, and such. So, um, so in any case, yeah, on, on, this, on the staffing issue, um, um, we are, when, when, when everything comes in at once, we don't have the capacity to like assemble everything. So that's also going to slow down the thing. So it will space things out for like a, a month or two. So we'll go through one thing after another. And we, and we also don't want to get in a situation where um, we are three weeks behind on normal restock orders because we're busy assembling new products. Um, that's also not a good situation. So if it gets to a point to where it's between filling normal restock orders and getting a new new product out, we're going to choose getting out normal restock orders uh, to keep the flow going. Um, so I hope everyone you know agrees with that um, um, you know with that philosophy. Um, so. Um, okay. Ah, the translucent, someone said translucent D3s. Well, we still, I mean, um, yeah, that is also made by, was also made by the factory in England. Okay. And I have been in contact with them recently as of last, yesterday, I sent them an email asking them what's their availability. Now I've been, now I got to realize that I waited two and a half years before I canceled my order for the mini polyhedral dice. And during that two and a half year period, I was constantly told, we're, we're making them, we're almost, you know, we're almost ready. So I'm not really certain. So um, I'm thinking of going, going ahead and making a mold at the German dice factory to be able to make those. Cause I think that they're really, really cute. I mean, we, 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 I'd probably make a few design changes to, to make them so it's not exactly the same you know, design and such, and probably use our fonts and stuff like that. But that is definitely one of those pro projects um, that I would like to get made um, when the when the factory has more capacity. Um, so, uh, um, yes, that's one of the things that I really would like to do. Um, um, you know, the um, uh, any, uh, so I think that's about that's about the end of the presentation, right, Scott? There, there, we're not we're not we're other other panels were there. Yeah, the next the next one is just the uh, slide for questions. So what I can do is go ahead and, and end the slide presentation. But did you did you want to announce which conventions you will be at? Oh yeah, we're going to be at Dragon Con uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, over Labor Day weekend. Also over Labor Day weekend, PAX West, and then also on uh, at, at Gen Con, of course, on the sixteenth to the nineteenth of, of September. Um, um, so um, yeah, it's it's. Gen Con, I mean, all these shows are gonna have a very different feel this year um, with, all, with all the big companies. Um, and uh, um, it's not that, that normally, you know, when we come out to the show and have new products, you know, we will get a few mentions, but, you know, we might get a lot more mentions this year because all the, the bigger companies are not there. Um, and now where we're like a middling, mid-range type company, now we may be one of the big companies. Um, and so in some respects, having like a, a fair amount of new stuff might create like a super buzz, which hopefully will carry over on our normal stock in the future and, you know, all the things, you know, um, because, you know, there's no question that there's a collector's market out there for dice. And, you know, obviously I want to be part of that. So um, to do that, you need to have like new products. So, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that I can get to the point to where people will just collect Chessex dice and not bother with everyone else. <laughs> but of course, that's, I mean, that, I mean, that's, that's probably normal. That's, I think mean, that's a, the dream of everyone. I'm sure everyone at Coca-Cola, you know, wishes that they would say, you know, I wish everyone would just drink Coke, <laughs> you know, and forget about Pepsi, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, it's not reality, but, but you certainly, you certainly, you know, um, you know, you know, you know, want to strive, you certainly want to strive for it. I mean, you know, it's just, it, it, it's, it's only natural, you know. Um, so, you know, so that's, um, um, so that's one thing, but yeah, it's gonna be, I mean, I was thinking about it. It's like for the, for the people who go, it may actually be a more enjoyable experience. Cause I remember the, let's say it was circa 1990, 1995, that era. One of the, 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 the good things about going to Gen Con you got to see all those new little game companies that are just starting out, okay, and find all that, that new and interesting stuff, okay. Um, and sure, a lot of it was, 
people making it out of their garage and you know some of it was mimeographed and all this other kind of stuff but the thing is it was fun going around and, and playing all these new i new games from people and sure a lot of them were, were pretty crappy and never saw the light of day past the show um but some of the stuff there was was actually pretty interesting and uh, um lately th because it's because some of the big companies have this 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 video game mentality that you got to make people wait to be able to buy your new stuff um there's less time on the floor for people to be able to, to mingle around the, the whole booth the whole show plus the show has gotten so big it takes two days just to walk it um so let, let alone have some time to spend at each booth finding out what what their game's all about you know so the, with the show being smaller and the show having more small game companies and, and new game companies who haven't been able to get to the show in the past couple of years because there there just wasn't a space and they're on a waiting list they're going to be there so it, it could be a very it could be a, you know for the, the the true hardcore game aficionado it could be a very enjoyable show for them because they'll see all these things that they never would have seen but seen any other way or even known about and such you know um so who knows you know, so who knows? The next, I don't know, Gloomhaven may may be there. They never would have made it because no one, because they never would have been able to get gotten it out or whatever. You know, because uh, and that's one of the things. Why one of those things about the shows that uh, why we do it is that I've always been impressed about how tight knit the gaming community is. So if you go to a show and you have a hit, pretty soon everyone knows about it, um, and that's like really really good. I mean, I still remember, I still remember this guy. Greg Stafford, who all the old people may know who he, who he was, coming into my store after Origins in 1990, saying, oh, you got to get this game Ace of Aces, okay, you know, um, and why? Because it was a hit at the Origins that year, and, uh, you know, everyone was, you know, everyone thought it was really great and such, and, uh, you know, this is like pre-internet, pre-social media and such, and when it came out, it was, they, they, they had a real hard time keeping it in stock um, um, and such. So it's something that, uh, um, that, you know, by having all these dice there, I think that, you know, people go home and say, oh, you got to get all these new Chessie's dice. They're great. Um, and, you know, that just can't do anything but help the rest of the, help the rest of the Chessie's range um, and such. So, so it's something where, you know, obviously I don't want to say anything negative about my competitors, but, if you have a if you have a bunch of mini polyhedral dice, maybe you may want to think about not restocking them as deeply. Because <laughs> well, because I think that we're going to probably have well, the first twelve colors come out. I think next year we'll, we probably could be able to come out as many as thirty six, if not forty eight, different colors. That's quite a that's quite a range. Yeah. Uh, Don, would you mind showing the packaging again? Oh yeah, sure. The... Okay. So um, I just use the, it's going to get two. It's going to be a two um, two panel label, okay? Um, so there's the right there is our existing one, okay? And then here's the mini one, okay? Um, and uh, um, so like side by side, you know, having the same same dice, you know, maybe if, if I get like a maybe a, a better background, people can see it better, or or can you see it okay? It was fine before too. Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, so it's, it's just, you know, like I said, it's the, the 299 7, 11, and 12. It's the same packaging. And because the dice are so small in there, we're going to put a piece of foam that we put in the uh, 16 millimeter sets to bring it up a bit, okay? So that um, it, looks a little, it looks a little more full and such. Now, what I have in there, I have some eight sided, 10 sided, and 20 sided in red translucent, okay? And so I just put those in there. So it's, you know, it's, it's not all the shapes, but it's a representative kind of size wise. Um, so people can get an idea of what it's going to look like. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. A um, couple of questions going back to the lab dice and then also the Gemini. Um, are you able to give a hint as to what types of dice are going to be released in the lab dice and the, and the well, Gemini? There's, there's going to be a four-sided on the lab dice. <laughs> There's going to be a 60 millimeter lab dice at the end, so so there's the eight okay. dice, okay? <laughs> you know, but but, I, but yeah, I meant like the the types of die, no, not colors or anything too specific, but whatever well, you're I comfortable. Yeah, I I know there, there well there's definitely one Gemini, 
okay? Um, mm -hmm. And there's the five other ones. But to, but to tell you the truth, there's, there's like, there's a couple festives. There is, right, there is a Borealis in there, okay? Um, mm -hmm. With Luminary. Um, and to be quite honest, I've kind of forgotten what the other, <laughs> other ones were. Um, oh, right, there's gonna be a Vortex. Um, so I'm, I'm missing one. Um, oh, no, 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 the, the, there's gonna be three Festas. Right, three Festas, okay. Um, so, um, and, uh, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, everyone has different opinions on what's a good selling color, good looking color and such. But in there, I think there's only one, there's only one, maybe two colors. Is there, there's two colors that I'm a little concerned about, but other people said that they really liked it. So I, I went, I went with them because, you know, I've, you know, I'm, I'm not 100% accurate on what, you know, um, what will sell well once the market, after all, I thought Gemini pink purple was going to do well and, then, and it fell flat on its face, which is why we don't have it around anymore. <laughs> um, so, you know, so, so you know, you never know, and that's the, the nice thing about the lab dice is that we can give it a try, okay? And if it does well, you know, like uh, Nebula Nocturnal, you know, and Nebula Spring and Wisteria, we can bring it out at a later time. Um, but if it's something that really didn't do very well, then we don't have to do it again. Um, and, we, and, we, and we haven't clogged everyone's computer systems with, with stock numbers or products and, you know, you know, all, all this other kind of stuff. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a nice way to like, like do testing and such. But, but from my standpoint, there are, there are four colors in there that I really think at this point will become part of a normal range eventually. Okay. So I think it's, you know, I mean, so, you know, I mean, and, and that's actually pretty good. I, you know, I think, um, um, so, uh, um, you know, I think that people will, you know, um, you know, will like them. I mean, you know, again, I haven't, se I haven't seen, I've only seen a couple of the finished production pieces. I haven't seen all the colors and what I have seen so far is pretty good that they're pretty close to the samples that were made. Um, so, so that's a, you know, you know, that's a good thing. The other thing I should mention too, which I didn't mention before, um, is that um, we're, we are, we're going to try something kind of, kind of I wouldn't say new, but different. Um, we, we've gotten some requests for certain colors to be with other kind of paints, um, um, like an alternative paint color. So we're gonna bring one out as a kind of like a, like a test market, kind of like, a, um, it'll, it'll be in similar quantities to like a lab dye. Okay, and, 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 you know, and we'll see how it does. Maybe we'll replace the existing one with this one based on what, what people's reactions are. But it's one of those things where people have asked for some, some and, and a lot of times we're sitting around saying, geez, this is good, this is good. I mean, we did the same thing with like the, the speckled dice where we had the, like the cobalt, then we have the golden cobalt and we have recon and golden recon and both of them sell about the same. Um, you know, we tried, Golden Earth and Golden Water, and they didn't do as well as the normal ones, so we kind of stopped doing it. So, so doing alternative paint colors, it, it, it's something that that we're going to probably, you know, maybe do every once in a while, um, and we'll probably tack it on to either a Lab Dice or a, a Gemini Dice release, or maybe even the Mini Polyhedral Dice release. Um, you know, not do it as its own, because I really think that um, doing releases um, um, in a bunch gets more activity, interest, and therefore more orders and such. Um, I remember a long time ago, we, we brought out a couple dice by themselves and, and the market barely even noticed. Now this was like 1996 when we're not quite as well known and such, but still I like to try to avoid small releases because I think that it just doesn't generate the same interest as a six die or six color you know, uh, release does and such. Um, I will just say, if there are any questions from retailers, please feel free to go ahead and put those into the chat. Uh, there haven't there haven't been too many, and I and I have another uh, comment just to let you know that I do think that the the mini polyhedrals you showed uh, the new look is a significant improvement over over the former look. So uh, those those look great. 
And then uh, Manuel asks, uh, are those gray or green battle mats and mega mats available now with GTS or coming soon? Well, well, they should have been available, but the vinyl hasn't been made yet. <laughs> I think it's gonna take them seven months, if I'm lucky, for them to get it made when normally it takes less than three. <laughs> so like I said, I, I think that October, November is probably the earliest we're gonna see those just because of the time it takes to roll them, print them, et cetera, and such. And we don't wanna run out of the existing mats. So it, it's something that, um, you know, I'm thinking like October, November, you know, for, for those, okay. Um, uh, oh, by the way, I should also say too that, that we're not coming out with mono mats in those colors for two reasons. One, they chew up a heck of a lot of vinyl um, and uh, we, I want, and, um, and I, I'm only making so many, so many. The other reason is that we're having trouble getting the mono mats made, but we have, a, we are hoping that we have a breakthrough on that to be able to double capacity so we can keep them in the stock a little better than we have been able to the past, like six months to a year and such, so. Okay. Yeah, uh, and then Sundance Cards asks the old school mats, are they still available? Yes, they are. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. We're, we are not, we are not discontinuing those whatsoever. I mean, as a matter of fact, if it, if it comes down to whether we should roll the new mats or keep or roll the old mats to keep them in the stock, we are rolling the old mats to keep them in the stock, okay? The, the one good thing, I mean, I mean, think about this. I placed an order for them for a restock of the normal vinyl back in December of last year, and that order has not been finished yet. Um, but because we keep so much product in stock, we really are not, I'm not worried about running out of stock of them, okay? So, you know, my policy of trying to keep a year's worth of vinyl in-house um, is, paying, is paying dividends because otherwise, we, if I was playing more close to the vest or trying to do just in time, we would have been out of the mats three or four months ago. Um, so, 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 don't, so there's no, no, not that people would panic over such a, uh, you know, mundane product, but there's no reason to like go out and buy extras because we still have, we still have about maybe a two to a three months, about a two months supply of uncut, unprinted vinyl in stock. And we have about a two to three months supply of printed mats in stock that are either in the rolled or unrolled form, okay? So I probably still have about a five month supply, even with what I have right here, okay? And, and they will eventually get these, these done. So I think that we're gonna, the vinyl will be done sometime in August. So we're gonna get more vinyl in. We're gonna get that last December order, you know, in nine months. Um, and, you know, and I have, I have two more orders, one place at the end of January and one placed in April for more vinyl behind that, okay? So assuming that they take nine months to get made, um, we'll have them well before we run out of this production run. So it's one of those things where um, I've always had a philosophy of that just in time production just doesn't work. Um, um, and, you know, I mean, you know, um, I think that, that that has borne fruit during this period because, you know, it's, it's like, it takes, a, it takes a factory about three weeks to make one die, okay? Now they're making a lot of the dice at the same time, but to make a, a, a vortex green 20 sided die, it takes them like two to three weeks to get made. Now, you know, think of all the colors that we have, we have about 140 or so color, like 150 colors and basically nine shapes. So we have like 1,350 dice to keep in stock. If, 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 the, if we had to have them all made at once, I mean, it'd be impossible. You know, we, 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 you know we, couldn't, we couldn't keep it on the shelves, but because we have so much inventory, because I, I try to, when I order, I order up to two and a half years um, supply, you know, and it takes them a year, year and a half to complete my order, it kind of works out. Um, so, so, you know, my philosophy of, you know, having a lot of money tied up in inventory is, is paying big dividend, dividends right now because um, as, I, as I hope Scott will attest, you know, our fill ratios throughout the pandemic have been, have been great, you know, um, you know um, if not near 100% on things that um, are currently, you know, are not discontinued and, and, and things of that nature. So, uh, 
um, you know, it's, I, you know, it's very important because I, my guess, although I'm, I'm far away from the, the distribution and the retail side of it these days, my guess is that there's a lot of shortages out there in the marketplace right now of good selling product. Yeah. I'll, yes. And, you know, with, with uh, the pandemic and all the effects that it's having on, on shipping and, and releasing of new product and manufacturing, um, availability is, is key right now. And having products that, like you said, that fill really well, uh, that you can stock on your shelves. Um, and that's, sell. That's, yeah, and sell. And that's key. So now, now that people are starting to come back and they're looking at dice and they're, and they're seeing more of it, we're seeing the uptick uh, in sales. I hope the retailers are also seeing that as well. Uh, but I did, uh, we're running short on time, but I just wanted to recap um, what I've got listed as the new lab dice. We're looking at a late September, October release on those. Probably more like October. October. Uh, mini polyhedrals sometime in Q4. Right. Gemini dice sometime in Q4. Right. And the battle mats looking like Q4 as well. So we're pretty right. good. We're going to be pretty well stacked for the holidays, it sounds like. All right. People say, what? More dice? You know, you know, I mean, yeah, yeah, I know. It's, it's really unfortunate. Like everything transpired. I mean, you know, yeah. You know, the, the things that were, were, the dice that were made like early, okay, we couldn't get, we can't get the packaging. Yeah. The dice that were made the, 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 on the items that we get the packaging, we, we, we can't get the dice. So it's just like, and then like on the vinyl, we just can't get the vinyl. I mean, it was like, you know, you know, the, what was the, what's the thing like the best laid plans of mice and men or something like, like that, yeah. you know, and it's just, as I said before, everything's tra transcribing to happen all at once, you know, and uh, well, we just have to hope that there's that pent up demand. To yeah, right. Them. Well, I, I think that for the, the, the mini polyhedral dice, I mean, you know, like I said, no, no offense to my competitors, but some of these, I mean, you know, they're just, they're just so cool. I mean, they're, I mean, you know, they're just so cool. I mean, um, the, the renditions, you know, especially, I mean, especially on the luminary. I mean, it looks like just like the normal luminary dice, just only smaller. I mean, it's just, you know, they're so good. And I was really amazed that they were able to get that good a job done on the painting of the numbers. Um, because if you look at the old dice, sometimes like on the fours and such that in the sixes, it kind of like mushes in and it's not, you can still read it and it's not, you know, they're not unusable, but it's not as crisp, you know? And it was like, I was looking at some pictures that we're having and the, I was looking at only minis, but they were blown up. And I could not tell if they were the normal size dice you know, picture of that, or if it was the minis blown up. They were just so close to the normal dice, okay? And, you know, I'm usually pretty good about picking out molding differences and such. And the fact that I couldn't tell a difference was like, was very telling. So if there's anyone who's a fan of our dice, they're gonna wanna have the minis because they are really, really close to the same thing, but only smaller. Yeah, they do look fantastic. So really excited about, about those coming out. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't see any additional questions, so I want to go ahead and, and wrap things up. Uh, just as a reminder, if you're watching on YouTube, you can like and subscribe and be notified for upcoming webinars. You can also register. If you're a retailer, you can register to be notified in advance to attend webinars live. Um, retailers, so I really want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to, uh, to be here to learn more about the upcoming products, and as soon as uh, additional information like images and and uh, those kinds of things are available. We'll make sure that we publish that out as well. And uh, Dawn, I want to thank you again for being here. We really appreciate you taking the time and, and uh, being here to, to educate us on the upcoming releases. And I well, uh, hope we can do this again soon. Yeah, well, 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 I just want to thank everyone in the industry, from the distributor down to the retailers for toughing it out during this COVID-19 period. I'm sure I'm you know, I'm sure it hasn't been easy. Um, and, you know, it's something that uh, um, it just shows, well, I just appreciate the, the, the love that people have for the gaming industry, uh, which is part of the reason why I got involved in the first place is I just really enjoyed the industry and, uh, and the price that we're selling and such. And, and I just wanted to thank everyone for, uh, first of all, obviously carrying our products, but also just, you know, toughing out rather than sort of saying, you know, 
I think it's gonna be a lot easier doing something else. I'm, I, I don't wanna take the risk anymore and just, just close up shop because that certainly was an option. Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes it wasn't a, you know, it wasn't an option for some people, but, um, but it was an option for, for, for many. And I just appreciate everyone um, toughing it out because, you know, we sell probably about, I don't know, I think we, we sell, I looked at mail order, we sell, I think we're up to like 1.8% of our sales in mail order. <laughs> so I think, and then, and we had no conventions. So I think you, you can kind of get an idea of, of what percentage we sell through distributors and retail stores of our overall sales. So you guys are, are our lifeblood. And being a retailer and a distributor in the past, past, I think it's like the best system. And I really want to keep the system going. So um, I really, you know, appreciate everyone's, you know, you know, the efforts that, 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 that they've, they've made over this past year and a half. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think that's an excellent sentiment. Um, and once again, we just appreciate you all. Uh, it is right up against time. So I want to, I want to make sure we honor our commitment there. But Don, again, thank you. Retailers, thank you. And we'll see you again next time. Have a great rest of your week.